Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about something that uh, has happened to me recently and also a friend of mine. I was recently interviewed for the Canadian national paper. It's called the Mail and Globe, or the Globe and Mail, actually. And um, I'm not Canadian, sorry. But uh, the interviewer asked me, she's a reporter, asked me an interesting question, which is, you know, if this problem with gluten really is true, then why doesn't everybody know? I think that's a very interesting question, and I'm not in any way trying to be rude, but it just seems kind of silly to me. I mean, it would be like saying, uh, my mother, as an example, she's 88 years old, and when she was in her 20s, she smoked. She was a model. It was cool to smoke. No one knew there was anything wrong with smoking. So maybe the first time that my mother heard, oh, you know, I've heard maybe smoking's no good for you. What do you think her response was? I haven't heard that, you know, because if it was really bad for us, wouldn't we all know? There's got to be a transition, wouldn't you think, between having something exist, then learning more about it, and then deciding whether it was good or bad, right? I mean, isn't that the same with everything? What about vitamin D? Do we all know that we should check our vitamin D levels? Hopefully, it's enough in the mainstream that, that a lot of people have heard about this. I'm sure it's not everyone, but there's been enough information about vitamin D levels that a lot of people are aware of it, such that if you said, wow, you know, I've heard low vitamin D isn't good for your health, most people would probably say, yeah, I've heard that too. So now we all know about vitamin D. Uh, what about margarine? Well, for a long time we thought margarine was great and butter was bad and eggs were bad and <laughs> vegetable oils were good. I mean, this is how we learn. This is how we develop and grow. So these questions of, gee, if, if something was no good, wouldn't we all know? Not in our early stages, no. Let's go to celiac disease. What we thought prior to a year ago, and many people probably still think this, is that it's completely genetic and either you have it or you don't. What did we learn last year? And I know I've spoken about this. We've discovered that people develop celiac. They have the gene, but the gene isn't necessarily turned on. So the gene can be turned on, and once that's turned on, you no longer tolerate gluten. But you could tolerate gluten up until you're 50 years old before that gene gets turned on and you no longer are able to tolerate gluten. We've learned that in this past year through two major studies. So these things develop. So when someone comes up to you and says, oh, gluten, you know, that's a fad. I'm sure that'll, you know, go the way of some other fad. That's ridiculous. You need to tell them, sure, you can wait another decade or 15 years, whatever it's going to take, until it's very well established that gluten is a problem for your health. But maybe you want to check it out now so that you won't have long-term damage from it. This is way beyond the early stages. We have so much research out there in the area of celiac. Now we have a tremendous amount of research in the area of gluten sensitivity. We know it decreases your longevity. All causes of mortality are increased if you have celiac or you have gluten sensitivity. So, I don't want to hear about this fad stuff anymore. I don't want to hear about if it was a problem, wouldn't everyone know? It's my job to get everybody to know, to get more and more people to know. And I'm absolutely committed to getting that done. So help me out. Spread the word. There's a lot of good research out there that supports everything that I say. And until next time, I wish you very good health.